Hey guys, welcome to Weigh In Time. I'm Patrick and on this episode, we're going to be cooking the most anticipated recipe that I have ever done. A sin-free, healthy extra and SP pizza that's absolutely delicious. <laughs> this video I made a little mistake about measurements. So I am here to make sure that you've got the correct measurements that you need to make sure that your pizza is healthy extra B. So in the video I say that if you're having an extra easy day you can use 60 grams of flour and if you're having an SP day you can use 120 grams of flour but this is not the case. So looking into it a little bit further I've realized that you can have 60 grams of cooked bread mix as your pizza base if you're on extra easy and you can have 120 grams of cooked pizza base if you're having an SP day. Still follow the instructions on the video but when you have the dough which has been prepared so kind of the wet dough before you roll it out you need to cut off a 65 gram portion. So this is 65 grams if you're on extra easy or cut off 130 grams if you are having an SP day. This is of the raw dough before it's rolled out and what will happen is once it's rolled out and you roll it out really really thin, pop it into the oven, that's 65 grams, 5 grams of that is going to be the moisture and the water and also 10 grams on the bigger pizza is going to be the moisture and the water. So 65 grams of wet dough will make 60 grams of of pizza base and 130 grams of wet dough will make 120 grams of dry pizza base. Now once you have done that you can have another pizza if you wish but then you'd have to sin it or you can freeze the dough for another time. Enjoy the video. Before I get started with the recipe, make sure you are drinking a lot of water. I drink at least two of these a day. That's four liters. So this is your water reminder. Quite a while ago, I put a picture on Instagram of a delicious pizza, which I had made and it was healthy extra and it was just delicious and it was sin free as well. And I had so many likes, comments and things like that about the pizza, I've decided to make a recipe video of it. The full recipe and directions of how to make this is on weighintime.com. If you haven't been on there already, have a little look. I'm very, very proud of this site. There's a forum section with all of the recipes that I've cooked, plus also this one there, so you can have a little look at what you need. But I'm gonna be going through everything in this video as well. To make the base of this pizza, Pizza, all you are going to need is this and water. It is very simple. So this is the Asda wholemeal bread mix. I think it was about £1.50. I know that Morrison's and also Aldi and any supermarket really do exactly the same thing. I know that the Asda and the Aldi ones are definitely part of your healthy extra B. So you're allowed 60 grams of this if you're going to be doing a, just a standard extra easy day but if you are having a SP day then you are allowed a whopping 120 grams of this which makes a pretty large pizza. For the sauce I'm going to be making a very very simple sauce. I've just come up with this recipe myself. There are a lot more sauces online which is sin free for Slimming World but this is just a very simple sauce that I'll be using and the ingredients are tomato puree. Uh, we've also got some, uh, I found it, Thank you very much for everybody's comments. The uh, Morrison's chopped tomatoes with onions and garlic. So it's basically passata. Um, and we have um, some red onion, uh, cleverly wrapped up in cling film. And a garlic, which will not be complete without a new garlic peeler. This thing's brilliant. 50p, Amazon, best money ever spent. Top tip, 
dump it in a dishwasher. And now it is time for the toppings of the pizza. So this is entirely up to you. As long as it's got corn or meat and vegetables on it, it is an SP pizza, which is brilliant. So what I'm gonna be using is uh, bacon. So this is the reduced fat bacon. I really like olives on a pizza. So uh, eight of these will be one and a half sins. So I'm gonna use 16 of them, that's three sins. And red onions. I'm gonna be slicing this onto the pizza, not cooking the onions before beforehand but putting them on top of the pizza and then putting it into the oven. Sliced peppers. We have our protein food so we've got our bacon um, and chicken which if you want to add that as well you could but unfortunately I forgot to buy any. <clears throat> Um, and uh, we also have our speed foods already. So we've got peppers, we've got onions in there. There's also tomatoes in the base, but I'm also gonna be doing this. This is lovely on pizza. Um, it's a herb salad. So it's kind of like the fiery, peppery salad, which you can get. This one's bought in Asda. So you can use this, but what I would suggest is that you pop it into the oven and then halfway through, that's when you add this and then you cover it with a little bit more cheese because otherwise it will wilt and it won't taste as nice as it could. Speaking of cheese, the best one to go onto a pizza is of course mozzarella. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Morrison's and Asda both ran out of the low fat mozzarella. So I had to get this one instead. Um, it's low fat mature, but I would recommend low fat mozzarella and you can have 60 grams of it onto your pizza. The first thing for the base that you want to do is measure out 120 grams of wholemeal bread mix. And then you want to place it into a bowl like this. Uh, so if you can see all of the bread mix is surrounding a kind of a clear spot in the middle. Now that is where you're going to pour your water. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have only made this on my own zero times. My fiance has helped me make this dough every single time apart from right now. So let's see how it turns out. I'm pretty sure that most of you know how to make dough, and if not, it is written on the side of the bread mix container. Uh, so, you know, you can probably do this, but we uh, did a little bit of math. So um, I say we again, my fiance did a little bit of math, um, and we realized that it was 120 grams, and then that needs about 86 milliliters, which is about that much of warm, not hot like I did, warm water, okay? So you can touch it, but it is a little bit warm. And then what you wanna do is you really, really, really want to soak up all of that water into the flour. So you just pour the water into the middle of the flour. And then with a spoon, you want to fold all of the bread mixture from the sides into the water. There we go. Now remember, I am on an SP day today. That's why I'm using 120 grams of flour. If I wasn't, I would be using 60 grams. So if you are gonna be making this and you're just following the extra easy and not on an SP day, make sure that you use 60 grams of bread mix or you could use 120 and then sin the other half of about six sins or just put it in the fridge and have it tomorrow. So I've used 86 grams. This happened uh, the last time I made it. It's a little bit too little. So I'm just gonna add a really, really small, <laughs> I keep pouring it and then I've realized that I've run out of water. It has got a little bit dry. So I've added 86 milliliters of water. So I'm just gonna add a teensy bit more. You just basically wanna add water as you go on with this, not too much because otherwise it's going to be really, really difficult when it comes to kneading it. So that's almost looking right. There you go, you just wanna make sure that there's no flour left in the bowl, which there isn't, everything is a nice consistency. And then what you want to do is you want to pick it up and then roll roll it into a ball like that, see? So you get a nice ball of flour. Once you have this nice ball of flour, which is very sticky, then all you want to do is leave it into the bowl 
for five minutes and let it breathe. It has been five minutes and I've left this on the side for that time. Um, now I did forget to mention, so there is 120 grams of flour. That's what you're allowed if you're having an SP day or 60 grams if you're having just a normal extra easy day. Um, but you do need to take a little bit out. And the reason for that is because you need some flour on the side in order to dust the surface as you are kneading this bread. And you have to really, really knead this more than you've kneaded anything before in your life. If, like me, you had no idea what kneading meant, um, then all you need to do is basically, you need to kind of knead it, which is very weird to say, which is literally just pop your palm in and then just pull it backwards. So you just pop your palm in to the big dough ball and pull it backwards. Pop it in, pull it backwards and then fold it up. And basically you just want to get this dough really, really nice and warm so that it activates all of the yeast inside. So just keep it going. Now, once it gets a little bit sticky, so at the moment it's fine, it's sliding off my hand and sliding off the surface pretty well. But once it gets a bit too sticky, then you want to add more of the flour onto the surface or onto your hand, and then you want to do exactly the same thing again. Now, you want to do this for around about five minutes to make sure that you get it nice and warm and make sure that that yeast is activated inside the flour. So as you can see, it started to stick to my hands a little bit. So you just want to pop the flour onto the surface so that you can carry on. And basically what you want after about five minutes, it could take longer, it's, uh, it wouldn't take uh, less than five minutes, but if it um, feels really smooth and not sticky at all, that's exactly what you want it to be. You want it to be really an elastic -y and really like a smooth ball of dough. Once you've been kneading this for a, about five minutes or so, it should become quite smooth um, and quite soft. So that is what you need to do. Now, um, the next step for this, it needs to breathe and expand for 35 minutes. So what you wanna do is just uh, use the bowl that you had the original ingredients in and just spray it maybe twice with some fry light and then pop the dough ball into the bowl. The fry light is actually to stop it from sticking. And then what you want to do is just to cover that with cling film and leave it for 35 minutes so that it raises in size. Once you've covered in cling film, just leave it for 35 minutes in a warm place and it will rise. And now it's time to roll it out. So you will need some of that leftover flour to pop onto the surface, just to make sure that it doesn't stick to the surface. As in need, I don't really need to say this, but my dad would tell me off if I didn't tell you, make sure your surface is clean before doing anything directly on it. So use the rolling pin, and then you want to just roll it out as much as you can. So just roll it. As you're rolling, if it does stick to the counter, to add a little bit more of that flour which you had earlier on, and make sure that it's all nice and covered. There we go. It's rolling very nicely. So what you basically want is you want a really, really thin base, like really thin, because obviously the thinner it is, the bigger the pizza is because we want to stretch this 120 grams as much as we possibly can.
pizza has been cooking for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let's say about 15 minutes and it looks delicious. Have a little look at this. Look how good that looks. I'm gonna zoom in like they do on uh, MasterChef. Okay, maybe not there because it's slightly burnt there. Look at that. So that is the pizza completely free and because I'm on an SP day today, I can have a delicious pizza that big and it is also good for me. So there you go. Uh, the recipe, ingredients, all that kind of stuff is on the Way In Time website, wayintime.com. So have a look at the recipe there. And also, of course, as always, whatever toppings that you're going to put in, if you've got any comments, if you've got any questions about the recipe, pop them into the comment section below. Please leave a like on the video. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this. And I will catch you next time for another weigh in time. I'll see you then. And speaking of cheese, you're allowed it. I made no sense, that was ridiculous. <laughs> it's a personal choice. If you want ham and pineapple, there you go, that's your uh, pineapple. Oh. it comes to the toppings of the pizza. Now, this is something which you can decide. You can have chicken and bacon, corn and veg. I've said toppings like 20 times.